Hey everybody, welcome to our midweek update. And uh, well, 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 what do you know? Here it is, Davos attendee says the quiet part out loud. What is that? Well, we're gonna look at that, but we're also gonna look at a lot more because there's more to this than what meets the eye. And of course, that was a few weeks ago with Davos. But boy, are things fascinating. Um, hey, by the way, uh, coming up on February 22, it's a Wednesday evening, 7 p.m. I'm gonna be joining Josh Aaron at 412 Church in San Jacinto, California. If you can make it, the event is free. Uh, all of the information is available on the HopeForOurTimes.com website and also right here on uh, the Hope For Our Times app. And by the way, with the app and with the website, we have everything, all videos, unedited, um, everything's there on the app and on the website. I have my weekly interviews, prophecy updates, Sunday morning messages, we have the full Bible, we have all of our events, whether it's prophecy conference or Israel tour or a Footsteps of Paul tour and right on down the list. Plus we have daily news that's on there Monday through Friday. I do take a break on Wednesdays, our, our staff does. And uh, so, hey, it's all there. Uh, and uh, so again, on the app and on the website, we have everything. So I encourage you to uh, go there. And again, Josh Aaron will be joining me February 22. And with that, it's going to be an Israel night. I'm going to bring a short message on Israel. And then Josh Aaron's going to be leading us in worship. It's going to be an absolutely uh, fantastic time. At the end of the month, no wait, uh, the beginning of March, uh, March 3 and 4, I will be in Orlando, Florida with Prophecy Watchers. Uh, Jeff Kinley, Todd Hampson will be there. Don Perkins will be there along with a bunch of my other friends. So I hope that you can make it to the Prophecy Watchers uh, Conference uh, the first weekend in March. And I think that is all I have to say. So uh, let's get going. So here this is. Davos Attendee says the quiet part out loud. What is that? Well, the agenda, this person says, and not just this one person, says it's to create a new world order. Well, let's go back uh, in a, a little bit of time and uh, recognize this is from the first book that I wrote, America in the New World Order. And uh, in it, I mean, you know, I wrote it in 2016, but I have some facts in here. And one of the chapters I have in it is regarding the shadow government. Uh, so what do we have? Let's just think about some things. We have the World Economic Forum, which was founded in 1971 by a different name. The name got changed. Uh, Henry Kissinger is totally involved. Uh, Klaus Schwab was groomed, by the way, way back in the early 1960s. I mean, you can go back further than that and find out that he was through his family, through his dad, and so forth. Uh, pretty amazing. So you, have, you do have the World Economic Forum. You have the Federal Reserve, which began in 1913. People say these things aren't real. Yeah, they are. Okay. The League of Nations, it lasted from 1920 to 1946. Council on Foreign Relations, founded in 1921. The UN in 1945, European Union began with the Treaty of Rome back in 1958. It took its present form in 1993, shortly after the fall of the, of the Iron Curtain. The ancient and accepted Scottish Rite of Freemasonry traces its roots to a lodge in London in 17. 33. So you got the Bilderberg Group, uh, you, and you go right on down from there. Um, let me read about a couple of other things that we have in here besides just the Bilderberg Group. But uh, it's very interesting. After the Bilderberg Group's meeting in Germany in 1991, uh, several French newspapers began running a David Rockefeller quote they said had been leaked to them from that year's meeting. And this is what the quote is. Now, some people have said this never really happened, but it was leaked, and this has been out there for a long time. Again, David Rockefeller, we are grateful to the Washington Post, the New York Times, Time Magazine, and other great publications whose directors have attended our meetings and respected their promises of discretion for almost 40 years. It would have been impossible for us to develop our plan for the world if we had been subjected to the lights of publicity during those years. But the world is more sophisticated and prepared to march towards a world government. The supranational sovereignty of an intellectual elite and world bankers is surely preferable to the national auto-determination practiced in 
past centuries. Now, I want you to think about that statement for just a minute. And, you know, this was back in what, 1991, uh, when he supposedly had said that, which now I have no doubt that he did. Now, I remember reading that before. I can go back 10 or 15 years and putting that on videos that I made, and people said, you're just a conspiracy nut. He never said that, and so forth. Well, now you look at the words he said, and you start to realize when you have the Bilderberg Group, you do have the World Economic Forum, you do have the UN, uh, you, you have all of these different groups that are all marching to this, exactly what David Rockefeller said. They're all marching to the same drummer. You go, well, wait a minute, that wasn't just some conspiracy nut talk back then. He really did say that. And you guys and us who are paying attention, we recognize these things. Now listen to this. At heart, elites do not believe members of the general public should make big decisions for mankind. If they did, uh, they would certainly open their meetings to press coverage and they would invite someone other than their fellow elites to join the discussion, but they don't want to do that. Everything's done in private. With good reason, they see the electorate as ill-informed and easily manipulated while keeping a facade of democracy. Several organizations of world elites, not just Bilderberg, are consolidating their power. Um, I, I think of this, and we think here in America, you have the Republicans and Democrats. Seems to me like they're both playing for the same team. You do have some people that are involved in politics that are pressing forward with righteousness. I want to commend them and, and keep them in prayer because they are doing the right thing. But you look at it overall and you think, man, it is, uh, there are some very suspicious things going on. And these globalists in the deep state, and even the shadow government, you know, when you start looking at all of these things and realizing where we are marching to, this quiet part that's been said out loud, the new world order. Though perhaps none of uh, these people see their plans yet, uh, they will eventually consolidate their power. They're going to develop the system of 10 kings. We are watching it develop. And we know this from Revelation chapter 17. We know this from Daniel chapter 7. But a few more things I want to bring up is regarding the club of Rome. Um, it, it really is a real organization. Aurelio Pecci, an Italian industrialist, and Alexander King, a Scottish scientist, established the Club of Rome in 1968. And uh, you can guess it was formed in the city of Rome. Now, this is interesting uh, because Revelation chapter 17 speaks of uh, the city on seven hills as being the problem. And many people say because of that, uh, you, we find this revived Roman Empire having its headquarters in Rome. So you have the Club of Rome, you also have the Vatican there. But let me read a little bit more. In 1991, the Club of Rome published a book titled, and you can find this book still, uh, The First Global Revolution. Now that's from 1991. Now listen to this. In searching for a common enemy against whom we can unite, they wrote, we came up with the idea that pollution, here it is, right? Pollution, the threat of global warming, water shortages, famine. Now, this is a quote from the book in 1991. Again, the title of the book is The First Global Revolution. So here it is. Let me read that again. They wrote, we came up, this is a quote, with the idea that pollution, the threat of global warming, water shortages, famine, and the like would fit the bill. All these dangers are caused by human intervention in natural processes, and it is only through changed attitudes and behavior that they can be overcome. The real enemy, then, is humanity itself. Wow. All this prefaced with, in a quote from the book, is searching for a common enemy against whom we can unite. Well, there, there it is. You wonder why all of these different things are going on. A lot more to say. Let me get back to Davos for just a minute. So this person at Davos, uh, Pakistan's Minister of Foreign Affairs, um, said here at the WEF, there's a lot of discussion about what the new world order will be. How do we work towards that new normative international order? Uh, they also, at the meeting, all openly acknowledge uh, they may not be successful establishing a new world order right now due to times being hyper-partisan and polarized uh, but they hope to bring it about in the very near future. 
uh, they continued and declared that countries need to respect the global ru rules and said, uh, we have countries that are respecting their national interests going beyond the global rules. They have five-minute cities that they determined to be utopia, uh, which they claim will be 100% solar and wind-powered, occupied by millions, which we know. So when you're following the Bible and you understand what the end game is and you see these things, that's why we have these aha moments. All of a sudden, the stuff comes up in the news. So we see what uh, they're doing over there in, um, with the Neom, that city that is being built. And we hear about the five-minute cities, the 15-minute cities, the 10-minute cities, the 20-minute cities. We hear all of this about a climate change and global warming and all the different dynamics that are going on and how, um, you know what, we're going to have to change the rules. You and I are watching everything increase in price, gas, food. You wonder why these egg plants burn down, chicken plants burn down, these food processing plants burn down, they get hit by airplanes, right? So we're watching everything. Everything is increasing in price. It isn't just a coincidence, and you can't just blame the Russians. There's a lot more to play here. Uh, this is interesting. Uh, when you start thinking about this, what, what do they envision? The end of all car travel. Saudi Arabian diplomat Ahmad al-Jabir talks about his vision of the future. There will be no more cars. They envision brain implants. The WEF predicts humans will soon embrace impl implanted brain technology so they can decode complex thought. And even by reading your face, they'll be able to figure out where your PIN number is. That is absolutely uh, fascinating. There's going to be a digital database to monitor all of us. Um, the WEF uh, goes on and says they've got to crack down on disinformation. These are all different speakers saying different things. A crack down on disinformation that is preventing people from doing what they want you to do. Brian Stelter, remember him from CNN? Uh, says the clear and present danger of disinformation panel. Wow, we gotta protect against the disinformation that is out there. In other words, curb your speech. Uh, European Commission VP Vera Yorva said, there's a quote, illegal hate speech, which you will have soon also in the United States. I think that we have a strong reason why we have this in criminal law where, where Vera comes from. So you look at this, go, let's make hate speech illegal. Well, what is hate speech? Whatever they determine hate speech is. Check this out. It continues from there. There will be the LGBT subversion of all culture. Here it is. The WEF LGBTQI plus panel discussed subverting culture with the LGBTQ agenda through media, entertainment, and claim, here it is, the quote, we've worked really closely with Hollywood on all of this. And then, of course, you can't miss this one. This goes back to, what is it? Ah, the Club of Rome. This book, The First Global Revolution from 1991. Here it is. This is a quote from the WEF. Our faith leaders know that this crisis is much more than physical, and they're talking about the environment and climate change. It's much more than physical. We have a deeply wounded spirit as people, and they're looking for a one-world religion based upon all of that. So you see all of this, and you think this is absolutely uh, remarkable, uh, but it goes much deeper than that. I wish I had a little bit more time uh, to bring in something here, but let me bring in what I can, all right? So uh, just a little bit more. Club of Rome member Hans Schellenhuber, who serves as the Pope's primary climate advisor, uh, the National Cla uh, Catholic Register says, the climatologist and self-professed atheist was involved from the beginning to the conclusion of the Lado, Laudato Sea. That'd be way back in 2015. So think of it this way. Get this. In a talk given to the 2009, 2009, I mean, this is how long this stuff has been going on. So why are they projecting and going this direction? Uh, in a talk given to the 2009 Copenhagen Climate Change Conference, 
Schellenhuber said, in a very cynical way, it's a triumph for science because at last we have stabilized something, namely the estimates for the carrying capacity of the planet, namely below one billion people. At that population level, he said, there would be no fluctuations anymore and we can be fairly sure of that. Okay, just a little bit more, I'm gonna wrap it up. He has openly called for a one world government with an earth constitution, a global council and planetary court. He explains them like this. The earth's constitution would transcend the UN charter and identify those first principles guiding humanity in its quest for freedom, dignity, security, and sustainability. The Global Council would be an assembly of individuals elected directly by all people on earth where eligibility should not be constrained by geographical, religious, or cultural quotas, and the planetary court would be transitional, a transitional legal body open to appeals from everybody, especially with respect to violations of the Earth Constitution. Um, I mean, it just gets more and more wild with this guy. Uh, when, you, when you look at this, uh, let me go a little bit more. I promise I'm almost done. Though the Vatican, or through the, yeah, excuse me, though the Vatican, the Club of Rome, and the Bilderberg Group are clearly working toward a world government, they would not call it a conspiracy, they would call it problem solving. To them, a one world government is a practical requirement for the long-term survival of humanity. Conspiring? Of course not. They would say they are planning. I mean, there's so much more to what's going on, but this has been around for quite some time. There really is, folks, there really is this shadow government stuff that's happening. Call it the deep state, call it the shadow government. We even have deep religion to go along with the deep state. Things are coming out of the Vatican and out of the Protestant church. So we see all of the dynamics working together. <clears throat> this plan has been around since the Tower of Babel was destroyed by God way back in the book of Genesis as men's hearts are set to do evil and uh, to bring about this global government. And that is exactly what they are doing. So when you see all of these things that are taking place, you hear the conversations coming out of something like the World Economic Forum and the plans that they have and the direction everything is going. You wonder why eggs cost more and chicken costs more and beef costs more and they're telling you you have to eat bugs. Gasoline costs more. Natural gas costs more. Virtually everything costs more. You wonder why that's going on. Um, it starts to make sense. It's about this agenda, bringing everything into play by 2030. <clears throat> by 2030, that's their plan. That's why it's called Agenda 2030. But for you and I, when we see all of these things begin to take place, what do we do? We look up and we lift up our head because we know our redemption draws near. That's what Jesus said. And so we can, we can man, we can be smiling right now. We can say it's going to be okay. They can raise the prices on this. They can take away that. They can talk about their 10-minute cities. They can talk about bringing in their end time religion. They can talk about their globalism. They can talk about their 10 kings. <clears throat> they can talk about the one leader that they want to rule at the top. Uh, but we know this, Jesus rules. He is king of kings. He is Lord of lords. And everything is going exactly as the Bible says. So lift up your head and look up because your redemption draws near. God bless you guys.